delicious water and its delicious properties, right? We know it's polar because oxygen is highly electronegative, which means it hogs the electrons in its covalent bond with hydrogen, giving it a slight negative charge. This is because it's almost like it has two extra electrons, so extra negative charges. This also means the hydrogens have a slight positive charge because they're so generous in their sharing to have almost no electrons, which means no negative charges. As well as being a bent molecule, this results in an overall dipole. So when individual water molecules are in close proximity to each other, they form these strong hydrogen bonds due to these dipoles. Not only with each other, when an ionic lattice such as sodium chloride is in proximity, the sodium cation is attracted to the negative oxygen part of the water molecule and the chloride anion is attracted to the positive part of the water molecule. This interaction is known as an ion-dipole interaction, as in the ion is positive or negative and the dipole of the water. Anyways, when enough water surrounds these ions, they're said to be hydrated and once broken off and away from the lattice, it has dissolved. But what governs this behavior? First of all, the amount of energy required to separate the ionic lattice must be less than the energy released when the ions are hydrated by the water, that is, when the ion dipole is formed, because energy is required to break bonds and energy is released when bonds are formed. However, if the energy required to break the bonds is more than that would have been released if when the new bonds are formed, then it won't dissolve. This is the case with silver chloride. Now it's not just dissolution that occurs with water. Crystallization also occurs. Take a look at copper sulfate. The blue crystal copper sulfate has a crazy attraction to water. In fact, when this salt is crystallized out of an aqueous solution by heating or evaporation, it's likely that water has found itself within the crystal lattice. This is why you often see copper sulfate expressed this way. So for every molecule of copper sulfate, there are five water molecules attached, and this is known as hydrated copper sulfate. If there are no water molecules within the structure, it's known as anhydrous.